Some of you may have seen headlines like this recently on the tech news sites saying that a critical flaw was found in Rust that allows you to do command injection attacks on Windows machines. And we have this nice little CVE here that's still pending a score from NIST as of April 13th, 2024, but GitHub and other places have rated this a 10 out of 10 critical bug. So to put that in perspective, this vulnerability here is rated just as severely as the XZ vulnerability that basically backdoored the SSH process for most of the Linux servers out there on the internet and probably involved a three letter agency or similar organization that has the resources to infiltrate the development of a compression library for years and years and become one of the main developers of that library before commit making some malicious commits to it. Uh, Log4j, Another vulnerability that could let you hack into most machines out there on the internet because it was so ubiquitous was also rated a 10 out of 10. So now you get the picture of vulnerabilities, you know, that allow a threat actor to easily take over lots of machines connected to the internet. Those are the kinds of ones that generate that 10 out of 10 base score because massive botnets are about as bad as things can get. Uh, but this vulnerability here is a little bit different. So if we read the description, it tells us Rust is a programming language. The Rust Security Response Workgroup was notified that the Rust standard library prior to version 1.77.2 did not properly escape arguments when invoking batch files with the bat and CMD extensions on Windows using the command. An attacker able to control the arguments that are passed to the spawn process could execute arbitrary shell commands by bypassing the escaping. The severity of this vulnerability is critical for those who invoke batch files on Windows with untrusted arguments. No other platform or use is affected. So basically, if there's some Rust code that's running on a Windows PC that might end up interacting with some bat files and it's able to receive some kind of user input, then that user could get arbitrary remote code execution on the machine. But how many programs do you think are out there like that on the internet in the first place? I mean, you could probably count them on your fingers and toes uh, because this whole bit here is just a really weird thing to do in the first place. Uh, but in lieu of any real programs that we can try to break, we have a proof of concept that we can play around with to demonstrate the issue. So this was written by Frostbitten on GitHub. And as you can see here, it's just some very basic Rust code that just takes some user input and then passes it into a bat file here. And then that's going to get uh, echoed out into the terminal. So if I test it out, cargo run, enter the payload here, I'm just gonna put test. And then you can see that string I entered test is getting echoed out from this, um, bat command, that bat file. Uh, but if I were to do it again and type, let's do hello instead, and then escape that with a double quote, put a um, and sign or, or ampersand, and then enter in a command like, who am I? Well, as you can see, it actually executed that command, right? The who am I command. Um, so you can imagine like if this was some kind of web application, you know, obviously you wouldn't be interacting with it uh, through a terminal, but you might be able to do this escape in like a web form or like the URL bar or anything else like that and uh, get the same kind of system information. Or, you know, you could also just execute other programs, right? So if I run it again, type hello and then escape that and mspaint.exe. As you can see, paint <laughs> executed, right? Because we can just execute anything we want. Oh man, that's a real crooked L. Um, you don't want that type of guy executing remote code on your machine. Now, it's also worth noting that 
This bug is not something that you can just fix with some user input validation, okay, on, on the command that's being called because the escaping is actually happening on the call that's being made to the batch file. It's not just a matter of poor implementation on the developer's end, it's actually a vulnerability that requires an update, uh, which the Rust team has put out. So if you're running Rust on Windows, you should update. If, if you're running Rust on Windows and you're doing uh, you know, this weird passing user input to batch files, then you should definitely update and uh, maybe reconsider your design patterns because like I've been saying, this is just a very strange thing to do in the first place. Um, but the point here is that the problem is not with Rust. It's actually with the Windows command prompt cmd.exe. Uh, like most Windows applications, it's unnecessarily bloated and complex. So some programming language runtimes fail to escape command arguments being sent to cmd.exe properly. And Rust is not the only uh, command or the only programming language that has this issue. So as you can see here, Erlang, Go, Haskell, uh, Node.js, PHP, like lots of different languages have this issue. Most of them have either updated their documentation to help developers avoid the bug or they just straight up patch the language. Uh, so if you're running the latest version of Rust, for example, this bug is not going to work. Now, Java in classic fashion has just said that they won't fix this bug and they're not gonna update their documentation either. And I can kind of feel that because like I've been saying this whole time, the idea of taking user input and then just passing that to a batch script on the back end of a Windows machine is already pretty out there. But I'll tell you what, if there is an application out there that's doing this, it's probably written in Java and it's probably written in an old version of Java at that. Um, but we do have some other examples of this bug uh, in some other languages by, um, or they were written by Brains93, these other proofs of concept in um, Go and Python. So this will just demonstrate that it isn't just a Rust issue, okay? So here we have, um, I guess more or less doing the same thing in Go. I mean, I'm not as familiar with Go, but just by looking at it, um, you know, I can kind of tell that you're taking user input, passing it to the, um, to the batch file, so Let's run this. I think it's um, go run and name of the file. Enter my payload here. So again, if we just do test, then everything works correctly. But if I put in, um, well, it doesn't matter what, what you put in. As long as it's just a string, then it's going to output the string. But if we escape it, put our and sign, and then do... Um, calc.exe, we can spawn the calculator, right? We can do <clears throat> hello and um, system info.exe, right? So again, this is not something that you would want a random user to be able to run on your machine and, and see this kind of information. Um, we can do the same thing with Python as well. So Again, it's just taking uh, user input. It's using the um, subprocess. These are ba di basically different libraries um, that these languages are using to interact with um, things like the Windows command line. You know, the the basically the system tools, right? So you have this for Linux. You have this for Mac, and this is why you can you can do the same thing effectively on Linux, it, it wouldn't be a batch script, but it would be like a like a bash script or something like that. And you don't get a problem, right? You could do the same thing on, um, I think Macs also use bash, maybe they use ZSH, but but you know, regardless, this is just something that's really a problem with um, cmd.exe, right? So we do it with, um, with Python and we enter hello and it just gives us argument receive hello, but we add in that extra double quote, that and, and um, 
we'll just do another calc. Boom, it spawns a calculator for us. Arbitrary remote code execution. Or I guess in this case, it's really just local code execution, which um, maybe not that big of a deal, right? This, this is just how I shut down my computer, guys, right? That's all this is. And uh, what is it? Shut down SFT00. That's just my nifty little shutdown command. <laughs> uh, so there you go, right? Um, just to give you an example of something actually malicious that you could do, you know, just shut down somebody's PC remotely. Um, so as far as mitigating this problem goes, if you're using Haskell, Node.js, PHP, Rust, or whatever, just update the language and you should be good. But the real advice here is to stop passing remote user input to batch files. Like, just saying that out loud, passing remote user input to batch files on a Windows machine has the same energy as freebasing cocaine to get your day started. Just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it. But what you should do is check out my online store, base.win, get yourself some great merch like the Come and Find a Tee or the Little Damon Hoodie, and pay in Monero XMR at checkout to save 10% automatically. Those are good ideas. Passing arbitrary user input to batch files, not great ideas.